Angola gears for elections later this month, and the election comes weeks after the death of President Jose Oruado de Santos, who ruled the country with an iron fist for 38 years and left a legacy of kleptocracy behind. I am Musisi Posiobi, lead researcher at GGA, and here to discuss the subject in more detail is Dr. Ross Harvey, our director of research and programs here at GGA. Ross, before we start speaking about the upcoming elections in Angola, please just walk us through the legacy that Dos Santos left behind. Dos Santos left a very complicated legacy, as you indicated, a kleptocratic legacy, one in which he ruled over the country from 1979 up until 2017, and in the process uh, extracted a huge volume of oil rents uh, with which he enriched uh, his family and his close circle of political elites and distributed patronage to a uh, very well-calculated circle uh, that would support uh, his incumbency. He also presided over uh, a very complex and brutal civil war, which was both the, the concrete expression of the broader Cold War context mm -hmm. uh, of the US versus the USSR, uh, MPLA backed by Cuba and the, the, the United Soviet Socialist Republics, uh, and UNITA backed by the CIA and the apartheid government. That war eventually, after 27 years, came to a brutal end with the assassination of Jonas Savimbi, the leader of UNITA, in 2002. Between 2002 and 2017, uh, Dos Santos presided over uh, a, a, a massive array of resource for infrastructure deals, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of the infrastructure that was built was white elephant uh, and not of much development purpose. Uh, and of course, uh, about $24 billion worth of oil rent still uh, relatively unaccounted for. There was concern within the MPLA that Dos Santos himself was becoming an electoral liability to the party. And I think that that was a major part of the reason behind uh, what was essentially an internal bloodless coup that, uh, that, that saw Dos Santos being removed from power. Uh, and Lorenzo taking over. So with Lorenzo at the helm uh, of the MPLA, he, he's promised cleanup mm -hmm. uh, and I think has been relatively unable to deliver on that. Uh, he inherited uh, an economic mess, a country on a fiscal cliff, highly indebted, uh, debt to GDP ratio of 132%. And for an economy solely reliant on oil, 92% of Angola's exports attributable to oil, 50% of its GDP, uh, that's, uh, that's a highly indebted situation to, to inherit. So very difficult um, to clean up, especially given that he had been reliant on those who had partaken of the, the rent extraction prior to his incumbency. So, uh, you, you immediately develop a picture of an Angola uh, replete with fancy new buildings, one of the most expensive cities in the world to stay, uh, and yet over half of the population still lives in poverty uh, and and of course that's that's the legacy that he has gone to the grave with so now we're approaching 24 august paint us the electoral landscape what is it looking like can we expect free and fair elections we we'll the short answer is no mm -hmm. and the primary reason for that is that unfortunately and historically mm -hmm. the electoral commission in Angola has been captured by the MPLA, the ruling incumbent party. Uh, you must also remember that this is a highly securitized state. Uh, and so uh, protest and opposition isn't actually uh, welcome. Uh, that, so this is not a democracy in the sense that we would typically expect. The other thing at play is that Angolan oil uh, is going to Europe and in the wake of the, the Russia-Ukraine crisis. And so the European Electoral Observer Mission will be reluctant to put too much pressure on Angola for fear that uh, Angola would move into the geopolitical arms, as it were, of Russia and China mm -hmm. uh, even more heavily, perhaps, than they have done. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think the MPLA knows that from a game theoretic perspective. And so they, they will have more freedom, as it were, to go ahead and rig the elections, unfortunately. We know that the relationship that Angola has with China is very controversial. Can you give us some insights? Why is this the case? This is essentially a matter of Angola giving up 
and sending its natural resources away mm -hmm. uh, in exchange for infrastructure projects that have not served the kind of development purpose that we would have liked to have seen. Uh, Sonangol, the, the Angolan state-owned oil company, which is a very proficient company, uh, is also a very complex company and essentially operated as a shadow state uh, through its web of sub subsidiaries post-2002. Those subsidiaries got into all kinds of nefarious deals with, uh, with Chinese companies that, let's say, had a, a less than honorable reputation. Mm. And so I think the general sense is that China's relationship with Angola has not brought fruit for Angolan citizens and has left a multitude of white elephants uh, infrastructure unfit for purpose. Uh, and of course, it's now mired in this debt, um, having sold its, its oil uh, and taken on a lot of uh, debt that it owes to China. How do fluctuations in the oil price impact this coming elections? Uh, the oil price is extremely important for the MPLA government. Mm -hmm. Its war chest with which to fight elections is essentially dependent on the oil price. Mm -hmm. It also means that, for instance, if the oil price is high, then uh, the MPLA is able to, uh, to negotiate a little more successfully with the IMF given its debt situation, International Monetary Fund. Mm -hmm. um, so high oil price, good for MPLA. Mm -hmm. Lower oil prices puts them in a bit more of a bind um, and unable to distribute patronage as extensively as they previously would have. I think in closing, predictions for the election outcome, where would you land exactly? Um, I, I would say that the MPLA would, would probably pitch their, their victory uh, at a, a similar kind of level to where they pitched it in, um, in 2017. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important for them to appear, to, to create the appearance of free, credible and fair elections. They know, obviously from the polling, that UNITA is growing in popularity. It's led by Aldoberto Costa Jr. A uh, very charismatic leader. Now the internal Angolan polls showed that uh, UNITA was ahead mm. with 64% of the vote. But the Afrobarometer surveys suggested the other way around, that, uh, <laughs> that the MPLA were, 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 were just ahead. Mm. So in light of the polling, the pre-election polling, it's difficult to tell what will unfold. I think to answer your question succinctly, uh, the fact that the Electoral Commission itself is captured by the MPLA um, and the fact that Angola is still very much a securitized state uh, means that what we would typically consider free and fair and credible elections are not likely to unfold. I, I would say that the MPLA will pip UNITA with about 63% of the vote. Dr. Harvey, thank you very much for sharing those insights. I guess we'll have to wait for the 24th of August. While Joao Lorenzo of the ruling party is seeking a second term, the opposition remains a formidable opponent, which will make the upcoming elections a tight race to observe. Stay tuned to GGA's website for the full election coverage. For more in-depth discussions on policy matters in Africa, please join us again. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.